In the 1930s through the 1950s, Universal Studios released a whole series of monster movies. They are collectively known as the Universal Monsters. Then, in the 70s through the early 2000s, a new batch of monsters began to appear on the screen, and they are often referred to as the Slasher Monsters. Both groups have become beloved horror icons. But which group is better? Today on Dusty Old Movies, we're going to find out by judging both groups in five different categories. Now, because there are so many monsters on both sides, I'll be focusing more on the main ones. Will Leatherface slaughter Frankenstein? Will the Wolfman make things hairy for Michael Myers? You'll find out because it's Universal Monsters versus Slasher Monsters. When the Universal Monsters first came out, they were terrifying. People had never seen anything like them. Today, they've lost some oomph. But sometimes, they still do create a creepy atmosphere. Just look at those evil vampire eyes of Dracula. They go right through you. And when he's inviting Renfield into his castle, it's still haunting. Another creepy scene is the opening scene in The Mummy when he first wakes up and it frightens the archaeologist so bad that it drives him insane. So some of these moments are still effective, but to be fair, some are not. But regardless, they do not compare to what was done in the slasher films. The brutality of the cannibalistic Leatherface and his family is unbelievably freaky, especially during the dinner scene and whenever Leatherface has his chainsaw. For Michael Myers, he's a silent stalker who's always watching and waiting for the kill, which builds suspense. And then, there's always a shockingly violent payoff. Jason follows a similar pattern. And with Freddy Krueger, he's in your nightmares, so he can appear anywhere and make anything happen. Oh my god. This is God. Their weapons are scary, their masks still look creepy, and they're almost impossible to kill. In some of the films, they'll shoot Michael Myers six times. He'll be down for a minute, and he'll pop back up. Which is very dissettling, especially when compared to just driving a stake through Dracula's heart and calling it a day. So the point goes to the slasher monsters. Of course, there's more to being a monster than just being scary. There's also the actor's performance. So our second category is which group had better actors? Now! Now, Michael Myers, Leatherface, and Jason are all non-speaking monsters who wear masks. But body language is still acting, and they do a good job at making their characters come alive. I especially like it when Michael Myers kills Bob. He tilts his head like this when looking at the corpse. Which shows that he's animal-like because that's something dogs do. And it shows his distance from humanity. As for the speaking monsters, Robert England is charismatic, sinister, and puts his whole body into Freddy Krueger. And Brad Dourif does a great job of voice acting and makes that goofy looking Chucky doll into a menacing figure. But, they do not bring the level of death that the Universal crowd does. For the main three, Bela Lugosi, Boris Karloff, and Lon Chaney Jr., these monsters were the roles of their lifetimes. Bela Lugosi had played Dracula hundreds of times on Broadway. He was actually born in Transylvania, so his accent was real. He developed this weird speech pattern for the role, and conveys pure evil. But he makes it seem so natural, as if he really was Count Dracula. To die, to be really dead, that must be glorious. Why Count Dracula? There are far worse things awaiting man than death. And then there's Boris Karloff as Frankenstein. With body language, his eyes, and a few <coughs> grunts, he's able to convey so much, both menace and sympathy. And in The Bride of Frankenstein, when the monster is able to talk, he's able to bring even more. A lot of monsters can make you scream, but Boris Karloff could make you cry. 
Boris Karloff was so proud of the role, he would refer to the monster as his very best friend. And Lon Chaney Jr. was the same way and would call the Wolfman his baby. And he brings his own childlike innocence to Larry Talbot. But when he's dealing with the werewolf curse, he brings his own darkness. All of the slasher monster actors bring their A-game. But the universal monster actors treat their roles like they were playing Hamlet. So the point goes to the universal monsters. Now for our third category, Renfield Baby, which group made better movies? Both groups made some excellent and innovative films, like Frankenstein, The Wolfman, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Halloween. Now some of the Universal films do have flaws, mainly because of how old they are. For example, Dracula has some pacing problems. The second half of the film is very slow, and it's very stagey which was a common problem for movies back then that were based on plays. On the flip side, the slasher films have some problems too, mainly because of how cheap they were. For example, a lot of times they would hire very iffy actors. Overall though, I would say the original films from both groups are all worthy of the name Horror Classic. But the problems come in when they started doing sequels. Because the slasher films are more about the monster killing people than an involved plot, the sequels become very repetitive, where if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Occasionally they do try something different, sometimes it works, like in Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, but you also get disasters like Jason X when he goes to outer space. For Universal, the Mummy series has the same problem of being repetitive, but in general, because the films were more plot and character driven, they actually have some excellent sequels. It's alive! It's alive! Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> the Bride of Frankenstein and Dracula's Daughter are just as good, if not better, than the originals, and they expand upon the ideas in the original. Frankenstein learns how to communicate and is seeking companionship, and Dracula's Daughter isn't content being the evil vampire, and she is seeking a cure. Even though weaker film series like the Creature from the Black Lagoon sequels, which again feature a silent monster, still manage to give you something different each time. The first one takes place in the Black Lagoon, and the second one he's captured and is brought to marine land, and the third one he's turned into a land dwelling animal. So as a franchise overall, the Universal Monsters made better films than the Slasher Monsters did, so they get the point. There's only one thing better than one monster, two monsters! So our next category is which group had better team-ups? Universal laid the foundation for the monster team-ups with Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. The plot connects the two monsters. Larry Talbot, the Wolfman, wants to die, but can't. So he seeks out Dr. Frankenstein for help. And that brings him to the laboratory, where he meets the monster. Larry is in human form for most of their screen time together, except for at the end when he turns into a wolf and him and the monster have a great fight scene. For the next three team-ups, Drac joins Frankie and Fuzzy. Unfortunately, House of Frankenstein and House of Dracula are set up like soap operas, where they show the Dracula plot and then they show things getting hairy with the Wolfman and then the same with Frankenstein. So the three monsters never interact with each other. And this bites more than Dracula does, because when you have Frankenstein, Wolfman, and Dracula, you want to see them together. Their final team-up was in the horror comedy Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. This one does have a plot that involves all three monsters, they interact, and at the end, Dracula and Wolfman have a big fight scene. But because the real stars of the film are the comedy team Abbott and Costello, the monsters are more supporting characters. Because the slasher films were originally all owned by different companies, fans had been waiting for years for a team-up. And it finally happened, with Freddy vs. Jason. It was a huge deal, and they treat it like one. The plot not only connects both monsters, but it also gives a reason why they're fighting each other. Freddy has lost all of his power, because people have forgotten about him, so he sends Jason down to spread some fear. As a result, Freddy regains his strength, but Jason is still killing the people that Freddy wants to kill. How annoying. So the two monsters battle it out, in two elaborate fight scenes. The first one takes place in Freddy's domain, the dream world, 
and the second one takes place in Jason's Camp Crystal Lake. The film gives you everything you'd hope for in a monster team-up, and the Universal Monsters were never able to completely pull that off, so the point goes to the Slasher Monsters. Once I killed a camp counselor in my pajamas, how a camp counselor got in my pajamas, I'll never know. Our fifth category is which group is better in introducing comedy into their films. Universal had two main ways of putting humor into their horror. The first way occurred in films like The Bride of Frankenstein, where the main characters were taken seriously, but the supporting characters, like Minnie and Dr. Pretorius, were designed to be eccentric and funny. Now, The Invisible Man had a couple funny lines, but he's insane so it fit his character. The second way they brought comedy in was as the franchise was winding down, and the Universal Monsters started appearing in Abbott and Costello movies. Bud Abbott and Lou Costello were a comedy team, and they would be funny while the monsters were trying to scare them. Bilbar, Bilbar, come. I'm a chick! I'm a chick! Even though the movie's funny, ha 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 ha! Dracula and the other monsters still get to be spooky. They play the roles the same way they did in the regular horror films, and retain what you love about those characters. Which makes the film more exciting because they're providing genuine menace, and it makes Evan Castell look funnier. As usual, the slasher monsters follow Universal's lead with one significant difference. With the slasher films, the monsters themselves got to be funny by making them campy or by having them say one-liners. Freddy Krueger became famous for this. Some of them are funny and they work well in small doses, but sometimes it goes too far. <laughs> I'll get you my pretty little soul too! <laughs> When he's imitating the Wicked Witch of the West, I feel embarrassed for him. It's ridiculous and not scary at all. In horror films, the normal characters are typically the boring ones, but the comedy fixes that problem. And the two funniest ones, The Bride of Frankenstein and Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, are two of the best of Universal's franchise. But in the slasher films, they're fixing something that's not broken. And the funniest ones, like Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, are typically the weakest in the franchise. So the point goes to the Universal Monsters. And now to tally up the score, I don't have my calculator, so I guess I'll just use <laughs> my fingers. One, two, three, and the winner is the Universal Monsters. On their first viewing, you might enjoy the slasher monsters more because they are scarier. But upon repeat viewings, as that scare factor starts to wear off, you're gonna get a lot more out of the Universal Monsters. So, thank you for watching Dusty Old Movies, and GIMME FIVE!